This is very important. Whatever you don't birth in prayer, you can never see it manifested physically. So I like everyone who believes in this prophet. I like everyone who believed God sent me to adhere to instructions this month. God is not a respecter of persons, so also the devil. The devil has no regard for you except for what you know. God also has, is not a respecter of persons. I believe God so strongly this morning that someone has been positioned in his family, in her family, for the rescue for, of everyone. I wish your amen would be louder than this. I'd like you to say with me, I am positioned in my family, in my community, for the rescue of everyone around me. Now, it's not a statement of excitement. It's a statement that confers on you responsibility. It's not just a slogan, sir. It's a statement that confers on you what? Responsibility. Because for a Joseph, there's work to be done. For a David, there's work to be done. For Elijah, there's work to be done. For a Gideon, there's work to be done. Holy Ghost, I thank you this morning. As we come into your presence, we ask that you touch every life. No one leave this service the same way they came. Heal every sick. Break every bound. And set every oppressed free. If that sounds like you, can I hear your loudest amen? Amen. Please get seated. Winning life battles, part one. I like to say here, before I bring God's word, that Rock of Ages is a school. Whenever you are coming here, you must come with your writing material. You must come ready. Because to be taught is better than to be prayed for. Once you know what to do and do what you know to do, then Satan is forever handicapped. The moment you have an understanding of the truth, you arm yourself with the truth, then Satan has lost the battle forever. Lift up your right hand up. By the end of this month, the Egyptians you saw yesterday, you shall see them no more forever. Yeah. By the end of this month, someone here will sing the song of victory. Yeah. Isaiah 43 and verse 1. I saw this scripture yesterday afternoon as I was studying and I began to look at it. I say, God, is this in the Bible? Some of you have read this scripture before, but I want you to look at it deeper with revelation. Because you need understanding in battle. But now, thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not. For I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. Did you see that in scripture? I have called you by my name. You are my own. What an assuring scripture. What a comforting scripture. What a scripture that creates hope and confidence. For God to look at me from heaven and assures me that I'm his own. He said, thou art mine. I have redeemed you. 
I created you, O Israel. I formed you. You are my own. Is that comforting, ladies and gentlemen? Now, God is telling you and I that we are his own. He said, you are mine. Meaning, I'm laying claim on you that you are my own. Can you connect with this, please? Now, I was thinking, having said this, the matter was settled. You didn't connect. Now, God told me I'm his own. He has assured me that I'm his own. Very comforting. What an assurance, ladies and gentlemen. He said, you are my own. I formed you. I created you. You are mine. Is there anything more assuring than this, ladies and gentlemen? Can you talk back to me? Please, can you talk back to me? Is there anything more assuring than this? For God to look at you straight in your eyes and say, you are my own. I formed you. I redeemed you. You are mine. I called you by your name. That's comforting. But let's look at verse 2. You know, in my study, I saw this yesterday. And I said, wow. I'm your own. But when thou passest through waters, how can I be God's own and pass through waters? I will be with thee. He didn't say you won't pass through waters. Follow me. The journey is long. <laughs> I will be with thee when thou passest through the rivers. They shall not overflow thee. Why did you allow me to pass through God? When thou walkest through fire. Now, you didn't get that. Look at the word the Bible used. Walk it. So even when you are in fire, you are supposed to walk while in fire. He didn't say you are going to. So when you are thrown into the fire, like Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, what you do in the fire is that you walk. I didn't say so. The Bible says so. He said, when you walk it through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall they, the flame kindle upon thee. Now, this is a contradiction. I have called you by your name. You are mine. I can't guarantee that you will not pass through the waters of this world. I can't assure you that you will not pass through fire. But my only assurance, when you walk through fire, be conscious of my ever presence in the midst of fire. I can't guarantee you that the challenge of this world, the waters of this world will not come. But they are not permitted to cover you. Look at verse 3. I was trying to understand this. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia and Seba for thee. Very comforting. Verse 4. Since thou art precious in my sight, thou hast been honorable and I have loved thee. Therefore will I give men for thee and people for thy life. Did you see this? Verse 5. Fear not, for I am with thee. <laughs> I will bring I will bring thy seed from the east and gather thee from the west. Verse 6. I will say to the north, give up, and to the south, keep not back. Bring my sons from far and my daughters from the ends of the earth. I have redeemed you. But when you pass it through the waters, verse 2, I'm with you. Now, this leaves me with no option. 
I'm not praying not to get into trouble. I'm only praying that God brings me out of the trouble. Then I read another scripture yesterday. It said, many are the afflictions of the righteous. I'm trying to tie up something here. He said, many are the afflictions of the righteous. He said, but the Lord delivered them from all. Please, I'm taking you on a very long journey and I want you to follow. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. When you pass it through the waters, you, you walk through the fire, I am with thee. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God delivered them from all. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered him out of them all. Meaning, afflictions is inevitable, but deliverance is assured. Afflictions is inevitable, but the deliverance power of God is certain. There are different kinds of affliction. There are financial affliction. There are sickness affliction. All kinds of affliction. He said, but the Lord delivered them from them all. I bow down my knees on this altar. Whatever represent affliction in anybody's life, as I hear your most vibrating amen, that affliction is ending this same hour. First Corinthians 10 and verse 13. First Corinthians 10 and verse 13. I was looking at these scriptures while I was studying yesterday and I was amazed. There had no temptation taken you but such as is common to man. Can I say this quickly before I move on? Don't ever allow the devil make you feel that your problem is special. Never you allow the adversary to make you think that what you are going through is peculiar. It's a very serious problem. Look at what the Bible says. For there is no temptation taking you but such as is common to man. But God is faithful. Temptation is real, but God is faithful. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above? Meaning God knows your measure. He will never allow Job to be tempted beyond his capacity. He said there is no temptation. Meaning there is nothing I'm going through right now. That is not common to man. There is nothing I'm going through now that is peculiar. There is no money in my pocket. I don't have a job. It's common. Oh, I've been diagnosed of sickness, incurable disease. It's common. The doctor just told me I have no womb. I have no sperm cam. It's common. I finished university. I can't get my result because of complication. It's common. He said, there is no temptation such as is common to man. But God is faithful. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able? Meaning, no matter how big you think your trials are, now God knows you are able. But will, with temptation, also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear. This is it. God is faithful. I am able. Temptations are common. God is faithful. I am able. No matter what I'm going through now, say with me, it is common. 
God is faithful. I am able. <laughs>
as holy as Jesus. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, scripture says, the man who knew no sin, for he had made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, who knew no sin, no sin in his life, no iniquity in his life, yet he was taken. And Satan take at him. Matthew 4 and verse 5. And take at him. Up into a holy city and set him on a high pinnacle of the temple. You read verse 6 to 9. Then you get. And said unto him, if thou be the son of God, fall down and worship me. Fall down. For it is written. He said, cast yourself down. Cast yourself down. He take his angel charge concerning you. And if you look at through the temptations of Christ, Jesus did not, he only quoted higher authority. It is written. Who is blessed here today? My prayer for you, you will come out of the fire. The water will not overshadow you. You will come out of the mouth of the lion. You will sing the victory song. If that is you, can I hear your loud and say amen? In Deuteronomy chapter 2 and verse 24, he said, rise ye up, take your journey, and go over to River Anon. Deuteronomy 2, 24. He said, I have given you Sihu, the Amorite, king of Hezbo, and his land. Begin to possess it and contend with him in battle. This is where I have challenge with many believers. Yes, God has given you, but it's not takeable except you engage the devil in a fight. I bought a land in this Benin almost 2011, almost seven years ago, seven years ago, I was in, I don't know where I was, I ran the church here, when they called me that somebody else is building on the land, me, in this city, they asked for me, oh, pastor, that's your land, in Amagwa, I say yes, he says, People are building there. I have the paper signed, deed of transfer, but somebody is building. I drove myself. I didn't send anybody. I drove myself. Saturday, I went to the land and I saw the people. Before I opened my eye, clear off. Now, he said, they told us you are the owner of this land, but we didn't believe. Now that you believe, leave. I called them Vance, go and fence it. It's my land, but somebody wants to take it. I didn't send anybody. I went in person, drove myself, stood on the land. Clear off. If not, to be taken. Many of you here today, many things have been taken that is your own. I have a friend whose father was a prominent man in this Benin before he died. Very prominent Isha businessman. Had properties all over the country. So he called me. He said, my father has a land in Wari. That land is more than... Uh, let me say the way it is. More than 100 hectares of land in a place called Ejeba, somewhere in Worry. He said the community took me to court. I won at the normal court. We went to appeal court. I won. We went to Supreme Court. I won. Legally, the land is my own, but they threaten me that if I have two heads, I should come. He said, they said, if you have two heads, come and possess the land. 
Now, they share the land among themselves. They build houses. It's, and somebody told me, there is only one man that can rescue you, and it's Pastor Sazua. I said, enter the car. Out of the hectares of land, how many is my own? Oh, oh we have to settle that before we go. Hallelujah. Is that a wrong statement? Am I still born again? Am I still anointed? <laughs> so I went to the land, came down. I was expecting a land that is not my own. I looked around everywhere. We're almost there now. We're almost there. You have caught judgment. Yet, you can't possess the land. That is the case with some of you here. There are inheritance that are stored up for you in the heavenlies. Yet, you are frustrated on earth. Jesus said, I became poor. That through my poverty, you can be rich. Yet, you can't pay school fees. Yet, you can't feed. Yet, you can't pay rent. What a shame. You have the court judgment. When Jesus died on the cross, rose from the dead, that was the supreme court of heaven's judgment. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 18. He said, I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of your conception, the keys of your businesses, the keys of your treasuries. I have them with me. It's no longer with the devil. Yet you can't take delivery. Hebrew chapter 2 and verse 14. Hebrew 2 and verse 14. You are not different from that man that has caught judgment and can't possess his land. For as much then as children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that has, 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 had, is he present or past tense? Meaning he has it before, but no longer have it. That is the devil. How did he take it back? Revelation 1, 18. I am alive and I have the keys. Lift up your right hand up. I stand as your prophet. The key to your inheritance is released right now. The key to your financial breakthrough is released right now. Whatever force from hell that want to humiliate you, that want to mock your prophecies, if I hear your loudest amen, that force shall be broken down forever. Yeah. If that is you, can I hear your loudest amen? Yeah. Who is blessed so far? You have Supreme Court judgment that this land is your own. In fact, when we went to the land, the, the man was afraid, shaky, said, Pastor, let's go. <laughs> the earth is the Lord. Let me see one man in this territory that we ask me what am I doing here the fire will fall from heaven then he called one young man in worry he said I saw what I've never seen today he said I, I, I used to think uh, apostle is gentle is gentle until I saw him in worry and I was calling those guys who built houses. I said, how did you come here? How did you come here? He said, you will not have talked to them. I said, why? If I don't talk to them, they will not know ownership has changed hands. I needed to let them know that ownership is about to change hands. He said, let's go. I said, I'm not true. I was walking around the land, walking around the place. I said, you mean this place is part of the judgment? He said, yes. This place is part of the judgment, yes. And you are looking for money to pay school fees for your children. Wow. So when the community heard, I was the one who came. They said, are you sure he is the one who came? Or he, he said, he came in person. They are not calling us for negotiation. So 
So I have some free land in Wari now. So <laughs> that's what it is. I'm, I'm not like that man in Ecclesiastics who saved the city and did not negotiate for his own. Psalm 144 verse 1. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be the Lord, my strength. Did you see that? Which teacheth my hands to war and my fingers to fight. I didn't write Bible. Blessed be God, my strength. Means my strength in battle is drawn from the Almighty. Who teacheth my hands to war. And my fingers to fight. Why do I need to fight? Look at verse 2. My goodness and my fortress and my high tower and my deliverer, my shield. He in whom I trust, who subdueth my people under me. Go to verse 12. Why do I need to war and fight? That our son may be as plants grown up in their youth. If I don't fight this fight, my children have no future. Did you connect with this? Blessed be God who teacheth my hand to war and my fingers to fight. Why should I engage in the battle of destiny? That our sons may be as plant grown up in their youth. That our daughters may be as cornerstone polished after the similitude of the palace. If we don't fulfill verse 1 and 2, this prophecy is not in view. 13, look at 13. That our garments may be full, affording all manner of store. That our sheep may bring 4,000 and 10,000 in their street. 14 and the final scripture. That our oxen may be strong to labor. That there be no breaking in, nor breaking out. That there be no complaining in the street. Why? He teacheth my hands to war and my fingers to fight. Am I talking to anyone here? Don't leave battles for your children. When you look around your family, don't complain in the street. Tackle the challenge. You look at your mother's children. You look at the kind of family you come from. Don't complain. Tackle it. In course of this teaching, I will show you how to tackle it. Can somebody connect with this, this prophet this morning? Who is blessed here so far? Now, receive grace to fight. Receive grace to war. Receive the anointing to take delivery of the things that belong to you. Psalm 18 and verse 28. For thou will light my candle. The Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. Did you see that? 29. For by thee I have run through a troop, and by my God I have leaped over walls. Can you connect with this, please? He said, By God I have run through troops, through army, and by my God I have leaped over walls. Anybody that tells you, sir, that there is no battle in life, you have been cheated. Don't listen to prophets and pastors who tell you. I mean, they just prophesy and excite you and don't teach you how to win life battle. But my God, I ran through troops. But my God, I have leaped over walls. A man lived in a house as a tenant and God helped him to build his house. As he was living, he told his landlord, I finally finished building my house. Glory to God. And the landlord gave him crates of eggs. He didn't have the leading to eat the eggs. So he gave the eggs to his dog. His dog died right in his eye. He watched his dog helplessly die by eating strange egg by a landlord. That is to show you the wickedness of this age. He said, by my God, I have leaped over walls. By my God, I have run through troops.
29. Look at 30. Let's walk this thing. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all those that trust in him. The next verse. For who is God? Save the Lord. Or who is a rock? Save our God. Did you see that? The next verse. It is God that guided me with strength and make my way perfect. Go to 34. He teaches my hands to war so that a bow of steel is broken by God. So that the bowl of steel is broken by angels. Great servant of God, Wigglesworth, was in his house and heard some noise downstairs. When he came, he saw the devil in form of skeleton doing like this. He just looked at the devil and he said, I didn't know you were the one. I would not have come. And went back to sleep. The same way the devil came, the devil left. God is depending on you, sir, to break the bowl of steel. Look at 34. Go back there. He teaches my hands to war so that a bowl of steel is broken by my arms. 35. Thou hast also given me the shield of thy salvation, and thy right hand had holding me up, and thy gentleness had made me great. Look at 36, 37. First, let's walk this. Thou hast enlarged my word under me that my feet did not sleep. 37. I have pursued now watch this. Because of strength, because of content, I pursued my enemies. I overtaken them. Neither did I turn again until they were all consumed. I release grace on you now. This month, pursue every adversary of your home. Until they are consumed, you will not leave them. Yeah. If that is you, can I hear your loudest? Say amen. amen. If that is you, can I hear your loudest? Amen. amen. If that is you, can I hear your loudest? Amen. amen. I pursued them. Me. I ran after them. I pursued them. Until they were consumed. 39. For thou hast guided me with strength unto the battle. Unto what? Thou hast subdued under me those who rose up against me. Can somebody connect with this teaching this morning? 40. Thou hast also given me the neck of my enemies that I might destroy them that hate me. 41. They cried when I heard them in prayer. When I tackled them in the spirit, they cried. They cried, but there was none to save them. Even unto my own God, but he answered them not, because he's not with them. 42. They, then did I beat them small as the dust before the wind. I did cast them out as the dead in the street. 43. So thou hast delivered me from the striving of the people, and thou hast made me the high, 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 high. So I'm the head of all the witches in Benin. He said, you have made me the head of the hidden. The head of the hidden. Meaning I'm the head of all the occultic powers in this land and in this nation. You have made me the head of the hidden. Anywhere witches converge to discuss, I'm their head. You have made me the head of the hidden. A people whom I have not known will serve me. In 44, he said, as soon as they hear that I'm the one coming, as soon as they hear of me, they shall obey me. The strangers shall submit themselves unto me. As soon as they hear, as soon as they hear, this is your covenant place in battle. As soon as they hear of me, they shall obey me. The strangers shall submit themselves unto me. 45. 
The strangers shall fade away and be afraid out of their... Do you believe this? Numbers 27 and verse 1. Are you there? I want you to look at this. Who is blessed so far? Then came the daughters of Zelophah, the son of Hapha, the son of Gilead, the son of Macha, the son of Manasseh, of the families of Manasseh, the sons of Joseph. And these are the names of his daughters. Noah, and Hagla, and Micah, and Tazah. Verse 2. Let's read together. I want to go. And they stood before Moses and before Eliezer, the priest, and before the prince and all the congregation by the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, saying, verse 3, Our father died in the wilderness, and he was not in the company of them that gathered themselves together against the Lord, in the company of Korah, but died in his own sin and had no sons, verse 4. Why should the name of our father be done away from among the family? Because he had no son. Now give us therefore a possession among the brethren of our father. These are ladies, not men. For many years they had no inheritance. They were deprived. One day they confronted Moses and Eliezer the prophet. They confronted them, Eliezer the priest. They said, Kai, this status quo must change. Who in this church this morning is ready to ask questions? Who in this church ready this morning to confront anybody that need to be confronted? Who in this service this morning is ready to say enough is enough? The daughters of Zelophe rose up one day. He said, Moses, this is not rebellion. We are making demand of our father's inheritance. Is it because our father had no son? A closed mouth is a closed destiny. You can't, look, anything you don't want, sir, don't watch. If you don't resist it, it will persist. Look at the next verse. Look at the next verse quickly. Let's walk this thing. Numbers 27 and verse 5. He said, is it because our father has no son? And Moses brought their matter before the Lord. Moses was confused because it was against tradition. Come on. That tradition that is not in your favor cannot continue. That arrangement that is not in your favor cannot continue. Now, now you need to utter something. Oh, I can't connect with this person. I can't connect with this woman. I can't connect with this man. For your sake, you need to utter something. I wish I can get a witness here this morning. You just need to utter something. You need to utter the process. You need to utter. Ah, yeah, yeah. One of the battles I knew I needed to fight was the battle against poverty. The most miserable day in my life was November 2013, where Rehabonke came to town. After the crusade, it was powerful crusade, sir. I went home. Only to be summoned by my landlord. I lived in the same house with my father. Two of us could not pay rent. So landlord was waiting. As soon as I came, he said, yeah, yeah, pastor. So your father has taught you how not to pay rent. I, it pierced my heart. And I knew that the battle against poverty is one battle that I had to win. And I will win it. I knew. Can I tell you something? Don't lament over your situation. Rise up to take decision. And Moses, Numbers 27 and verse 6, Moses took the matter to God. In verse 7, God said, Those women have said the right thing. The daughters of Zelophehad speak right. Thou shalt surely give them a possession of an inheritance among their fathers and brethren. And thou shalt cause the inheritance of their father to pass on to them. They've said the right thing. Those women have said the right thing. Look, at they are ladies. They are women. But they rose up to place a demand on what belonged to them. That uh, uh, Okaibet tradition that doesn't favor you has to change. 
that pattern that doesn't favor you has to change. You are not changing it by physical fight, no. Although we, we, we live in the flesh, we are not warring after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal, but mighty true God. This battle is not a battle in the flesh, sir. It's a battle in the spirit. By the time I'm through with you this month, by July, you will be so violent and so hot that the devil cannot handle you. How I wish somebody can shout a big, big amen. amen. How many want to go to heaven? Raise your hand high. My good God. I'm happy to hear that. But can I tell you something different? Heaven is reserved for overcomers. Heaven is not a wish. It's a place reserved for overcomers. Revelation chapter 2 and verse 7. Revelation chapter 2 and verse 7. You will never appear in heaven, sir, if you don't conquer. Heaven is not a wish. Heaven is a place reserved for overcomers. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said unto the churches. To him that overcometh. The letter written to the seven churches. Say, to him that overcometh. Will I give to eat in the tree of life, which is the midst of paradise of God? Can't you, can't you get this? That if I must appear in paradise and eat in heaven, I have to overcome something here. So heaven is not a wish. Oh Lord, soon and very soon. You won't meet any Lord until you conquer the loss of this world. Look at 11. Revelation 2, 11. Revelation chapter 2 and verse 11. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said to the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. He that overcometh. I want to make heaven. No, heaven is not for jokers. Heaven is not for late comers to church. Heaven is not for casual Christian. Heaven is not for religious people. Heaven is a place reserved for overcomers. Verse 17. Revelation 2, 17. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said to the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna. And I will give him a white stone and the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth save he that receiveth it. 26. He that overcometh and keepeth my works to the end. So there's nothing like victory in January and collapse in March. He that overcometh and keepeth my works to the end. To him will I give power over nations. Revelation 3 and verse 5. Revelation 3 and verse 5. To him that has, he, he, Revelation 3 and verse 5. He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment. He that overcometh. Look at verse 12. Him that overcome will I make a pillar in my temple, in the temple of God, and he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of what? And the name of the city. My God, which is the new Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. 21. He that overcome it. To him that overcome it. Will I grant to sit with me? To him that overcome it. So you may never appear in heaven, sir, until you conquer something here. When thou passest through the fire, when you go through the waters, they will not overshadow you. So that's why the Bible says, can't eat all joy when you fall into diverse temptation. Because out of your temptation is your divine lifting. I wish somebody's amen can be very loud. Amen. On Tuesday, we'll go deeper in this teaching. Now, what is the nature of this battle? This battle we are fighting, what's the nature of this battle? It's a battle in the spirit. Two, it's a battle of strength. Three, it's a battle of knowledge. And we expand on this in communion service. What is the nature of this battle? It's a battle in the spirit. Number two is a battle of strength. 
Number three, it's a battle that involves knowledge. Who is blessed here today? Can I say this very quickly before we close the service? No man can eat on your behalf. No man can go to the toilet on your behalf. No man can wear clothes on your behalf. So also, no man can fight on your behalf. If you have pastors and prophets you have submitted prayer requests to, you have just fooled yourself. They are sleeping and enjoying their lives. No man can fight this battle for you. The daughters of Zelophehad gathered up together and went to Moses and Eliezer the priest. This status quo must change. This thing cannot continue, sir. We need to Tap into our father's inheritance. Moses took their matter to God. And God said, these people have said the right thing. Release the estates, the properties to them. Release it to them. Now, if they never made demand on their inheritance, it will never happen. Ladies and gentlemen, I beg you by the God that I serve, whether it's Tuesday, Sunday service, don't miss any service. Because I'm preparing you for war. I'm preparing you for battle. I'm preparing you to step into the camp of the enemy and take what rightfully belongs to you. Why do I need to take this thing that belongs to me? Psalm 144. Verse 12 answers the question. That our sons may be as plants grown. That our children will wake up tomorrow and have no battles to fight. That our sons may be as plants grown up in their youth. That our daughters may be as cornerstones polished after the similitude of the palace. This is why you should fast. This is why you should pray. This is why you must engage the devil. A woman in Houston, Dodi Austin, the mother of Joe Austin, was diagnosed of cancer. And the doctor said, you have about 20 days to live. T.D. Jakes, all the heavy weight men of God laid hands on her. Nothing happened. And she said to everyone, I need to be alone. I need to be alone on my own. Locked herself in, selected scriptures, anti cancer scriptures, and got those scriptures from the word of God and began to minister those scriptures to herself. Cancer died. A woman was barren for over 18 years. One day she was in a church service, and the pastor said, Rats don't have gynecologists, yet they have children. That's the only thing she heard in the church. She took that word. She took that word and went back to God. He said, your servant said, rat has no gynecologists, yet I've not succeeded in eliminating any rat in my house. They are begetting, begetting on hourly basis. Therefore, I cannot be barren. Nine months after God gave her a daughter, are you hearing what I'm saying? Now, the kingdom of God is not a social club. When you give your life to Christ, sir, you are empowered to take demand. You need to understand that you are empowered to take delivery of covenant provisions. Are you hearing what I'm saying? This month, by virtue of your closeness to God and paying the price of covenant demand, some witches will cry out. Some devils will cry out. Wherever they have gathered, assembled together to make mockery of your mother's children, this month, God's fire will fall on the camp of the enemy. 
Oh my God. Somebody is loose to be married. Somebody's finance is released. Somebody's brand new job is released. That man that refused to sign that document has just been transferred out of that office. Whatever appear as delay around your life is giving way now. As God's own prophet, I decree, as you rise like the daughter of Zelophan and place a demand of your family inheritance, God shall release them back to you. Whatever power, whatever force that is holding you bound, as you take responsibility today, he said, by my God, I have run through troops. By my God, I have leaped over walls. Someone here, satanic yoke is broken out of your life. Satanic yoke is broken out of your life. Now, I give you three minutes to open your mouth and place a demand on destiny. In the next three minutes, sir, I want you to enter some realms you have never entered before. I want you to open your mouth and begin to call on God. I like you to fly now. I like you to open your mouth. I like you to begin to speak now. I like you to begin to take delivery now. I like you now to begin to take delivery. I cannot remain like this. I can't remain like this. I can't remain like this. I can't beg for life. Oh yes, this business has to change gear. My children has to change levels. If I can't hear your voice, then you are not serious for business. As you pray, make your clap on your hands and let God begin to move right now. Announce to the devils that you are serious for business. Break a shete labor. I cannot continue like this. Status quo has to change. Can somebody begin to call on him right now? Go ahead. Settle that matter. I can't die of terminal disease. HIV must go. Cancer must go. Poverty must go. Delay must go. Delay must go. Delay must go. You can do better than that. You can do better than that. I can't remain like this. From the days of John until now, the kingdom of God suffered violence and not let the violence take away by force. I cannot remain like this. Somebody pray. Somebody pray. Somebody pray. Somebody pray. Yashia, Legaria, Peleze, Manananarosh, Empralas, Pareketes, Yegosh, Baradas, Brokoridas, Leketeleles, Yemprusk, Yendus, Yegesete, Varekosi. In Jesus' precious name. Can I ask you a question? Moses met with God in the burning bush. He said, go to Pharaoh in Egypt and tell him, let my people go. Was that the instruction? Did Pharaoh surrender? Did he surrender on time? When Pharaoh heard that Moses placed a demand on the freedom of God's people. He gave instruction that they should increase their pain. Go and check. He says, because these people are not occupied, that's why somebody is saying I should let them go. Now, they increase their labor. They increase their pain. They added to their pain. Then the people stood against Moses. We were already suffering before you came. Now you have added more body into our body. Anytime 
it looks like you have never faced this kind of battle before. It's a sign that your freedom is near. Yeah. You didn't connect. You didn't get that. Anytime you lose your job, things turn upside down. You know, I used to have problems before, but I've not seen this kind. It's just a proof that you are near. As soon as Moses appeared, Pharaoh was so angry, he told the tax master, increase their burden, add more work to their work. Can I tell you the truth? You believe this prophet? There is no freedom without a fight. No freedom. A man rose up in America, the great Martin Luther King. He said, I have seen the promised land. I may not get there with you. He said, but God will visit his people. A man rose in South Africa, the great Nelson Mandela, and place a demand on the freedom of his people. He was in prison for 27 years. He came out and became president. There is no victory that is cheap. You will be fooling yourself if you think this kind of life you are living will deliver victory. You are not wise. One day, Kensarohua rose up in Ugoni land. This thing you are doing to Ugoni is not good. We can't farm. All our animals, fishes are all gone. They hang him. Sir, you can't watch your mother's children go through what they are going through. That's why God brought you to this church. Because it's not every preacher, sir, that has this capacity to help you come out of this battle. You can't, you can't be joking and expect serious result. You can't be coming to church by 9 and 8.30 and say you want to win anybody. In fact, you are the problem. There's no victory, sir. That is cheap. There's no battle that is cheap. Now, Pharaoh was after Moses. The people he came to deliver were after on him. Why did he not leave us in Egypt? Did we tell you we don't like the suffering? Before you came, at least, we were working for two hours, nine, six hours. Moses, first plague. Pharaoh said, <laughs> We have seen this before. Second, third, eight, nine. It took blood for Pharaoh to surrender. It took blood. The hair apparent to the throne of Egypt, based on the principle of primogeniture, the first son of a monarch, had to die for Pharaoh to give up. He said, now, let them go. First, he said, I'm going to release them, but they won't go with their properties. Have deliverance. Moses said no. But this time around, he said, let everybody go. I'm preparing you. The war is 1st of July. We are engaging in a fasting in 1st of July, sir. It's a time to come and stand in for your entire family. Things can continue like this. Can I tell you something? No man is your helper. It's you that is your helper. You need to take position. Blind Bartimaeus 
keep quiet. He shouted the more. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy. They said, keep quiet. He said, I will keep quiet. I will keep quiet. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood. Why? A man was persistent. By contractor, by businessman, you work in an organization, somebody wants you out. It's the battle of strength. It's the battle of the strongest man. You can't be casual in Zion. You can't be a chicken when the battle is the battle of lions. All the demons in this Benin know that you can't come near this prophet. They know. They know all the demons. If you see any of them, ask them. If you see any witch or any Ogoni man, any man who is from a Yerala kingdom, ask him. Say, Pastor, I should ask you. They know. Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. Who are thou? I am registered in the spirit. I'm known. Any devil that come near me will be roasted. Many attempts have been made on my life. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord delivered them from all. You know I can talk like this? No true general is afraid of battle. Because it's their training. In fact, there are army men, when there are no battle, they are not happy. Once they are not, hey, now some pizza for us. You see them jumping. Hey, hey, hey. They, because that is their training. That is their hobby. From today, I release the anointing for battle upon your life. I awake your prayer life. You will be praying in the midnight. You will be praying in the noon. Let me tell you how I sleep. Once I'm done with everything I want to do, finish my studies, finish my prayers, I just own music. It plays from night till dawn. Worship song. Just put it by my bed. From the time I go to, I, I will flow in that realm until I sleep. Then when I wake up, it's still on. See your glory. See your glory. See your glory come down. As we praise your name. Heaven we reign. See your glory come down. See your glory come down. Let my heart feel the temple of your spirit. Let my spirit feel the warmth of your embrace. Let me be a holy habitation where your spirit is placed to dwell. Oh Lord, I want to know your glory. Let's worship him. I love to the sacrifice of prayer. I sleep 
to the time I wake up. So my room is saturated with his presence. The whole place. Show me where the demon will come from. Before I sleep, I just put it on. Worship. On and on. That when I sometimes in my in my in my subconscious, in the spirit, I hear those songs. I'm cut off into the heavenlies. You know why I'm doing that? I know I'm in battlefield. I know that I'm in battlefield. The only man who have done what I'm, God is using me to do in Benin was the late Archbishop B.A. Dahosa. So I know that the demons know I'm on ground. I know. So my room is saturated by his presence. I played that worship. I started this few few weeks ago. Before I go to bed, I just put those worship songs. I put them on. Put them on. Put them on. He is the Lord. Forever his throne shall be. yourself tomorrow. I know. How many people want to do that? Create an atmosphere around you that the devil can come near. Create an atmosphere. So when all those witches come, they see that both human beings and heaven, they are worshipping. They will just hang outside my door. Hey, Usazua, Mamaiti Lawa. Create an atmosphere around you. Carry God. Move with God. Go everywhere with God. Cultivate how to go everywhere with his presence. We are the presence of God. He is. Carry his presence. When I woke up this morning, the music was still on. Was still on. Then I joined the music to tidy up for service. While I'm in the bath, I'm singing along this music. I am down and all my soul sing. When troubles come and my heart is
chest. Say, Lord, I vow to fight on behalf of my family until everyone is redeemed, until everyone is set free from satanic bandage. Don't be angry at the reactions of your siblings, your family members. That's why you are there. I stand today as God's servant and I decree that every battle you are fighting, if I hear your loudest amen, it ends on the spot. Before you return on Tuesday, God's hand will be mighty on your life. Every satanic nightmare ends on the spot. Never again will you be beaten in your dreams. Every form of sickness around your life, whatever is called, whatever diagnosis, as you say amen, your healing takes place now. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Come on, let's put our hands together for him. Now, now, while you are still clapping, if you are here, you have not given your life to Jesus. This is very important. Because the battle is a battle between two kingdoms. If you are not on God's side, you will suffer this, I mean, what they suffer on the other side. Anywhere you are, you want to say, Pastor, I want to take a position and fight for my family. Please, can you raise your hand up? I want to pray specially for you. You want to say, I'm tired of being on the other camp. I want to come to the camp of Jesus. Please, can you come forward? Can you come forward? Wherever you are, you want to say, Lord, I want to surrender. I want to give my life to you. Please come forward. Anywhere you are in this audience, oh my God, this is the best decision of your life. This is the best decision of your life. My God. My God. Now, now watch your life in few days, in few months. Because you can't fight from the enemy's camp. Now hear this. I, we had a humbling experience yesterday. After the prayer ended yesterday, a young man met with me. He said, Pastor, I have a go in my house. What do I do? I said, that's my job. I'll come and help you to remove it. No, that's remarkable. So I have a go in my house. I said, come on, we are going to come this week and move the Ogun out of your house. He said, thank you, Pastor. You can't fight from the other side. You can only fight from this side. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Say with me, Lord, I confess you as my Lord. You came, you died on the third day. God raised you up. Come into my life. Wash my sins. Write my name in the book of life. Thank you, Father, for saving me. In Jesus' name. Can we give God a big clap of prayer? After Tuesday's service, I have the, this urge in my heart to call one of my close friends. She has been pregnant and the date has passed. I never knew she has been in labor since that Tuesday. So I called her on Tuesday, she didn't pick. On Wednesday, she didn't pick because she's still on labor. So on Thursday, I was so disturbed. Abba said, you are around some people because you are their rescue. So I called her. I said, put the phone in her ear. They said, she cannot hold phone. I said, put the phone in her ears. Because I know her previous pregnancy, she had some complications and it needed to see us. So I began to speak in tongues. When the lady heard I was already speaking in tongues, he quickly passed the phones to her ear. I said, baby, I don't care to know what is holding you. Come out now. I and she said, who that. is speaking? I said, Bernice, I said, thank God. Thank God you, they call. And they pray, they pray. After praying, I called up two hours later. They said, she has put to bed. I come to Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And Mrs. Joy will be. I want to thank God for making me to know this place. To locate this place. Celebrate if, God for that. I want to thank God for making me to know Pastor Charles Osazua. Because the teaching he's teaching me, he gave me so much boldness. My, my mother passed on and the family was so strong. 
And after the two faithful to fail, I told God I'm going to confront them. And I went and confront the family. All my brothers and sisters, they were running away. I went to confront them. That you people killed my mother. But I want to bury this woman. Come out. They obeyed me. They were all shaking. All the boasting power fell down. I thank God for giving me grace to do it successfully. And there was no thing evil was rocketed. Come on, celebrate God.